somewhere in the middle if you mind uh, turning on your camera for the sake of um, record that would be great but okay. if not that's okay yeah thanks yeah so now okay so people who have used any programming language c c++ java uh, you know anything i don't know people probably don't use fortran anymore um okay including python so yeah people who have used python or any other programming language just just keep your hands up okay so we still have a lot of people who looks like we, we still have a lot of people who have not used anything okay about uh, i guess one fourth of them okay so um for those who have um used python this uh can serve as a good refresher for those who have not used python but have used other languages you'll see a lot of familiar things and you'll just learn how to do it in python and for those who have not um learned uh, uh, or have used any programming language um, it's it's going to be brand new for them uh, so i'll try to cover some um, some basics hopefully everyone can learn uh, something out of it and uh, programming um, is is more like swimming so you can't learn by by looking at someone um, in the water swimming you have to actually start doing it yourself so that's why it's a hand on session uh and uh, the way we'll be using uh, or the the place where we we will be doing everything is uh what's called google collab so uh on collab uh, i'm gonna post the link here in the chat everyone i'm assuming has a google account so you can just click on this link which is collab.research.google.com um and uh it's going to open up an environment so i'm gonna share my screen and then i'll and i'll show you what what it shows okay so I'm going to learn time fast. Uh, so let me know when you can see my whole screen. Yes, it is okay. visible. So I can't see anyone else on the screen. Uh, so if you raise hands or put stuff in the in the chat, I won't be able to see it. So just you know, unmute yourself, ask questions. Uh, but okay, let's go to collab.research.google.com and if you want i think we should turn off your video now because uh, then the bigger screen will be visible although i have pinned you can you just try to turn off your video once and see if um one second i think this is better for everyone no actually your uh, screen share is very small is it just is, is it just with me or with the rest of you as well no, mom, it's no, fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right. All right. Okay. Please. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, yeah. In in this session, what you can do is I'll I'll suggest you split it, it into windows. One is where whatever I'm saying or this meeting is going on, you can keep it on one side, and on the other side, just open collab dot um research dot google dot com. Okay. Um. And once you go there, you'll see a screen something like this. Uh, this bit might be empty, but all you have to do is basically just click on new notebook over here. And it's going to open a notebook for you. So I'm going to wait uh, for a few minutes. Um, if people are unable to do it, just let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to assume that things are working fine. Okay. Uh, so if someone can tell me if they're if they were able if they were able to open collab and and they can open a notebook and they see something like this yes sir it has opened it's... yes sir okay 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 good 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 thanks yes, sir okay so um this uh, is what is called um google collab this is ba um, so the interface is very similar to something called a jupyter notebook and you don't have to worry about the, these names as such but this is the place where you can write your code um, you can execute your code you can save your code and this is also a place where you can you know share your code with other people okay and and we'll, we'll do all of those things um, okay um, on on the main screen over here this is where we write our code so I can just write you know something like hello world um, and and this is where we'll, we'll write most of our code this is where everything will be done Okay, there are two kinds of blocks in this. One is called a code block, and the other one is called a text block. Okay, um, so 
since a lot of people know what programming or, or they have programmed in some language either python or or otherwise okay uh, people would be familiar with the concept of putting comments in your code so what you want to do is you want to write a piece of code but you also want to put in a human readable comment uh, something in plain english saying you know what this bit of code does uh, so that's why we also have text blocks over here so we'll be using all of all of those um, so that those are the two um, things which you should just know beforehand okay and uh, now i'll i'll get started with with basics of uh, with, with basics of Python, why we are using Python, uh, what all it can do. Uh, so uh, Python is a very, very versatile language. It's, it has been around for, for, I don't know how long. I've been programming in Python for a decade, or actually more than a decade now. Okay. Um, and uh, what we will be doing is, uh, you guys will be collecting data from Jantar Mantar, and then you would need some tool to analyze it, right? Uh, one way is you can put it in Excel sheet and then, you know, try to do it there or you can just uh, write everything uh, in on a piece of paper and then, you know, use your calculator. But that's not very scalable. And what I mean by scalable is that let's say if something has to be repeated again and again. So you keep getting more and more readings and you have to perform same calculations again and again. Right. So you want um, a more elegant solution and that's why we have all these programming languages. Right. Um, and Python is the most, I guess, user friendly one. So we'll be, we'll be using that for, for the project of this, pro uh, for, for this project. Okay. So, um, so the very first thing which I'm going to start with is, um, is some, something called, um, a variable. So you know how in algebra you have, you have variables like X, Y, and, and Z. Uh, so similar to that, you, you can just make variables in, in any programming language in Python. What you can do is you can just say things like a is equal to one. Um, now to execute this, all you have to do is press, press shift and enter. And then we'll wait for it for a few seconds. It's going to run. So you can run things like a is equal to one and, and it should run. So you can see here it's, it's sort of moving, which means it's running right now. Um, it's going to take uh, a few seconds for, uh, for the very first time, but once it's, it's, uh, yeah, so yeah, now it's run. So if you want to do now B is equal to two, it's going to run like more or less immediately. Okay. So that's running. So yeah, so it says A is equal to one, B is equal to two. And all we have done is we have defined few variables A and B and just put some value in it, which is called one and two. Uh, what you can also do is you can just, um, put A over here and then just press shift enter again and it's going to give you the value of A. Similarly, you can do, um, you can just do B and you know, it's going to give you the value of B and that's what, uh, the very basic Python or that's what, how you start in any, any programming language. Okay. Uh, then there are some keywords, which, which are basically specific words for a specific language, which do uh, certain things. So for example, if I say print a, it's going to print the value of a, um, in C, C plus plus you, you do something like C in C out. If you remember, uh, for those who have, who have used that language. Okay. And it's going to print the value of a similarly, you can do print B, uh, print B, um, and then, uh, it's going to print the value of B. Okay. Uh, keywords come with, uh, with a specific syntax, which means you have to use these things in a very specific way. Okay. So you can't just do like print a, and then assume it to, it will print a, and that's not going to happen. What, what will happen if I do this, or if I run this is going to give an error. Okay. So here's your error. It says it's a syntax error, uh, missing parentheses to call print. Do you mean print a, right? So it gives you some, in, uh, some useful suggestions in most cases. Uh, where it will tell you that you have made some error, you go look up uh, what's the syntax of using this command print and then, you know, just do it that way. So, so here's that. So th there are variables and then there are keywords. Okay. Um, you can do basic math operations. So you can do things like a plus B. And if I just run this, it's going to give me the value of a plus B, which is three. You can do a minus B. Um, you can also do multiple operations in, in, one line so this a divided by b and then we can also do okay so that that just ran okay so you can do a into b as well so you you can just basically run this so a minus b is minus one a divided by b is 0.5 a into b is two so that's that's all good 
uh, I'm gonna add one more which is exponential so if you do if you want to do a to the power of B uh, you put double stars sign over here and that's it okay so this is how basic Python uh, with, with numbers is you can also use um, so th these are integers right now like a is 1 uh, and B is 2 you can also convert them into something called floating point numbers so you can just do 1.0 and let's say 2.5 and I can rerun this thing. So a is equal to one, b is equal to 2.5. Now if I print a, a is 1.0 instead of one. Okay, b will be 2.5 instead of two. So what I've done is I've overwritten the values of a and b, okay? Uh, so if I do print a, it's going to be just 1.0. Print b, it's going to be 2.5. a plus b, you know, will change accordingly. Everything will sort of change um, accordingly, right? Um, any questions so far? Okay. Uh, no, it's here. Okay, thank you. All right. So, uh, Ompria is not able to see the screen. I, I don't know why. Is there is everyone else able to see the screen? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Then maybe just I don't know reconnect, uh, disconnect, and and try to connect again. Okay. Uh, so while that is happening, I'll move. I, I'll move uh, into some more data types. Okay, um, so you now have variables. You you can have. Um, you can put in values in variables. You can put one, two, three, four, five. You can also. So variables are more more versatile. You can also put strings. So strings are just, you know, text like hello world. Okay, and now a is this. It's going to run. And it's going to say hello world. Okay. I can do print a it's going to say hello world again and that's it right so you, variables are very very versatile you can put anything in them okay uh, if you want uh, you you can put uh, you know okay wait that, that's empty that's going to run into an error because it's an invalid syntax so you can put you know any number anything uh, spaces special characters anything you want to put in that just goes okay um, if a now, Python is a case sensitive language. What that means is that capital A and, and, and small a have a difference. So if I put capital A, it just doesn't know what it is. So it's, it's, that's why it's going to give you an error over here, right? Uh, okay, so now we have integers, we have floating point numbers, we have strings, right? Those are, I think the basic data types which you will be using throughout this course. Okay, so you, you shouldn't have any issues with that. Uh, now I'm going to move um, into um, a concept called lists. So lists are um, basically a kind of data structure where you can store multiple um, values. So I'll, I'll say, um, let's just call list of um, things, okay? Uh, so list of things is my variable. So instead of naming my variable, a, uh, variable ABC, it's always um, appropriate to use variable names which are uh, interpretable so you can so i know that list of things is 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 a list one which i'm going to talk about and you now it has some things in it so uh, list of things um or the list in python has a syntax so you use square brackets and then anything you want to put in between this bracket is is, is um will fill form the content of this so you can put you know multiple numbers so let's say one two three four Okay, and then list of things has four numbers in it, which are one, two, three, four. So if I print list of things over here, it's going to show me all these things. Okay. Um, now there are four elements. Excuse me. Yep. So is it basically an array? Uh, there is a difference between list and an array. I'll come to that. Okay. Yep. Um, so list of things um, has basically four elements, which is one, two, three, four right now. And uh, there are basic things which you can do with this list. And first one is called the indexing. So let's say you want to see the third element, which is three in this case, okay? You don't want to see the whole list. Uh, and the reason for that could be, let's say you have a list which has 5,000 numbers in it, right? And you want to see 420th number in. Um, so you don't want to print the whole list. You just want to see what that number is. And the way to do that is you put um, a square bracket on that variable, so list of things, and then square bracket, and then the index. Um, and 
in Python, counting starts from zero, okay? So the index is zero and the value is one. Index is one, value is two, index is two, value is three, and uh, index is four, value is, oh, index is three, value is four. So if I do list of things, zero is going to give me one, okay? If I do list of things, uh, three, it's going to give me four, okay? But lists are more versatile over here, uh, and I'll show you how. So you can put anything in list and by anything, I mean, literally anything. What you can do is you can put 1.0. Okay. You can put minus three, you can put hello and you can put any other string if you want. Okay. So now this list of things has four different things in it. Okay. Um, all of them are not of the same data type. So first one is a floating point. Second one is an integer. The third one is a string. Fourth one is a string. And the list of things works exactly like that. Okay. So if I do list of things, um, and now I want to see, you know, the third element, I will do list of things zero, one, two, and it's going to give me hello. Uh, does that make sense to everyone? Any questions so far? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Okay, so if there's nothing, um, we'll move on to uh, a few more things. Uh, so, you know, oh, these oh, are... Oh, oh. Uh, any question? Sir, it's like it's structured in C++, right? Okay, it's a bit unclear. Um, is it just for me or is it for everyone? Uh, so, when I tried implementing this... Uh last uh, piece of code okay it said that uh, uh, it should not be a tuple uh, like less indices must be inte integers or slices not tuple. so list of things and then square bracket and then a number inside is that what you're doing yeah uh, which is on i i think 30th which you've written okay so this yeah, one like um so what does it say uh, it says less indices must be integers or slices, not tuple. So it can't say that in 30. It will probably say that in 31. Okay. Okay. Uh, what you can do is you can put the, you, you can put it in comments, what you have exactly written over there, which gives you error. And I'll look at it afterwards. Okay. 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 Yeah. Sir, uh, is it like the structure uh, data type in uh, C++? Uh, no, structure is a bit more complex. Structure has many more other things. Okay. Yeah. You're talking about a struct thing, right? In, in C++? Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's a bit different. That ha that has other extra things. List is a bit more loose, I will say. So, okay. All right. So, okay. Sorry. Okay. Now. Um, you know, all this is good. We, we have some data types. We have a place to, you know, keep all these data types somewhere. And now we are going to introduce something called libraries. Okay. Um, you, you can, so what people do is people develop libraries in Python or with, with other languages, um, which you can use with Python and that, that will let you do, I guess, multiple extra things. Uh, in Python. So the two common libraries which we will be talking about today are called NumPy and the other one is called matplotlib. Uh, so the way to import libraries um, is something called, um, it's, it's a command called import NumPy in this case. And then the other one you, and for now just, you know, write, uh, or you can just write whatever I am writing if you don't know what, what's happening and I'll explain. The other one is import uh, matplotlib.py libraries that plot by plot as plt so just run these two things and then I'll explain what is what and what is happening okay so um numpy stands for uh, numerical python so if you want to do any numerical analysis in python uh, that's basically numpy and then matplotlib is a plotting library for python so if you want to make any graphs or plots or any kind of things um, you you would use a library called matplotlib okay so these two things which I've written over here, 
you can uh, just so could you repeat the repeat the use of numpy and matplotlib yeah so numpy is numerical python okay so if you want to do anything with numbers okay uh, so you know most of the things you want to do with numbers is is going to be much more than add subtract multiply divide right let's say you want to compute sine cosine um, and and tan uh, tan of a of a list of numbers right you need that function uh, you you need to be able to right uh calculate sine or cosine or log of things right or exponential of things right uh you want to do bit more complicated things like uh, i don't know some something in linear algebra or you want to fit um, uh, a line to some data um or uh, you want to apply some trigonometry any any complex mathematical thing you can think of um which has to be done it will be done via numpy so it's a library which which I'll show you what it is and how to use it and what all it has okay and how to use it in python so i think it's like a header file uses c++ for various uh, functions it is similar to a header file uh, yes but uh, c++ also comes with its own set of packages which you can install and use so it's it's a more of a package and, um, a header file is is um is very limited in that aspect so it's more it's more like a namespace you can think of it like that yep go ahead um, so why are we importing it as something i thought you import things from a package so i'll i'll tell you why we are doing it as something as well i'll i'll tell you that cool okay okay so the first one was numpy the second one is matplotlib so you are we are using import matplotlib.py plot as plt okay and i'll i'll tell you why we are doing as plt and as np okay uh, so first let's let's do one thing let's just uh, create uh, a list of numbers okay so we'll just call it a list of uh, numbers and i'll just put one two you know just some random numbers okay and uh, now what i want to do is um, i want to multiply each number with a constant okay uh, so i want to multiply every number with 10 so what you can do is you can do list of numbers into 10 and okay can people guess what's going to happen if i do this i'm multiplying a list with a number every element will be multiplied by 10 uh -huh. that's not what happens <laughs> this is python <laughs> so what actually happened over here is python um just like every other language in the world has its own uh, nuances and when you when you multiply a list um, in, in Python with a number, it's going to duplicate that list that many times. So I'm just going to do it into two right now. What it's going to do is, um, let me know when you can see it. Yeah. Okay. What it's going to do is it's re going to repeat this list again. So it's uh, from, you know, one, three, four again, till nine. So that's what happened once. And then same thing again. So if you want to multiply each number of this list, or each element of this list with a constant, let's say two in this case, what you have to do is you have to write something called a loop. Right? You have to write something called a for loop, uh, which which we can get into in, in some time. But what I'm trying to say over here is that you can't just directly do that. And this is where things like arrays come in which someone asked about. So NumPy has a data structure called array. So what you do is np dot, um, so we'll say, uh, now we'll say array of numbers is equal to np dot array and then what you can do is it can take in your list as an input okay so i'll just copy this and paste it over here and now this is an array and i'll show you what the difference is um so once you print it it's just going to say this and i'll do array of numbers into two now and it's going to multiply every number with two which is what happened over here okay so now now let me explain what all is going on what is happening okay so what um an array is um a data structure which is only coming from numpy okay it's not b built in in python just like lists are okay in this case um uh, when you multiply an array with a constant number it's going to multiply it by each element of that number so if i multiply it by you know some big number over here it's going to you know multiply it with that big number if you do that same thing with list that's not gonna work Okay, so this is where the numerical bit comes in. This is more intuitive. Okay, 
Now um, you can also multiply it with floats and it's going to work again. It's going to give you all those numbers again, right? But if you mul try to multiply it with some string over here, it, let's see what happens. It's going to give you an error because it just doesn't know how to multiply an array which has only numbers in it with something which is a string, right? So uh, this is what an array is. And so what you can think of um, or what you can say what an array is that it's a collection of elements which are of same data type, okay? Although you can have arrays with, with like different data types as well. So you only have numbers in this array, right? So now someone was asking, why am I importing NumPy as NP? And the very simple reason for that is if I import NumPy as it is, I'll just have to write NumPy.array, NumPy.array, and then, you know, it becomes cumbersome. So just to, you know, make your life easy, you just say import NumPy as NP, and then everything is NP dot something, right? Um, I can do any sort of uh, mathematical operation like np dot sign and it's going to compute the sign of uh, this array. So I'll just do array of numbers um, and it's going to give me the value of sign of this. So few few things are happening over here. One np dot sign is a function which is coming from numpy. So if I don't import it as uh, as np, I'll have to again write numpy dot sign, numpy dot cosine and so on. Okay, so that's why I just imported it as np. Second thing is I passed in um, an array over here instead of giving it the value. So I can, what I can do is I can do numpy dot sign three and or four in this case is going to give me a value. I can pass in numpy dot uh, numpy dot sign and then put four in a list, right? Because lists come in square brackets and it's going to work again, except the answer right now is, is an array. Okay. I can put multiple things over here it's going to give me you know, two values, right? Or if I have a variable, which could be either a list or, or an array, which has, you know, 500 or thousand or a million numbers in it, it it's just going to work. Okay. So any questions so far? Guys, if you have any question, please ask out. I'm not, I don't know. I cannot see your faces, whether you're understanding anything. If we, if we are going very fast, you can just promptly tell uh, Kaushal, Chinmay, Aditi, Tanmay, is it, is it all okay? You guys are yes, understanding? Yes, yes. What is the default input uh, in the sign function? Like it is radian or degree? It's radian, radian. Okay. So, yeah, now we'll get into a few more things. And the first thing is reading documentation. Okay. This is very important. Do not blindly go and you know, start running commands, never do that. Okay. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is, uh, let's see, numpy documentation. And let me know if you can see my screen where it says numpy documentation instead of the collab notebook. Yes. Okay. So, um, this is uh, the NumPy documentation website. You can just click on the web uh, on web over here. Okay. And now you can search the documents. Like these documents are huge. Um, okay. And I'll show you how huge they are. So if you want to do, uh, let's see, let's just go to one thing. So we'll just search for sign and it's going to show you numpy.sign. Okay. And these are all the inputs it can take. Okay. So the first thing is X, which is array like, you know, which is what we were doing by either putting in your, your number, your, your array or your list or anything. Okay. And the answer is someone was asking, what does the input in that's in, that's in radians. Okay. There are other things which, um, we can talk about if needed. Right. And what NumPy documentation also does is it also gives you some similar things which, which could be useful. So if you're using npy.sign, there is um, arc sign, which is inverse of sign, sign h, which is hyperbolic sign, cosine, and so on. It also gives you examples. So np.sign, um, and then, you know, pi, which is 3.14, you can use np.pi because it, it will have like many more digits than just 3.14, okay, divided by two. So sign of pi by two is one, and you know, it gives you one. Uh, you can give an array of numbers, which was, which was, you know, in degrees and then convert it into 
radians and so on okay it also gives you how to you know take in uh, how to use matplotlib and plot a sine function which is what we are going to do now okay uh, but few more things before before we we go over there so this is just sign if you you can use numpy for many many other things so let's say you want to do matrix multiplication um, I'll, i'm just going to write matrix over here uh, for now uh, so np dot matrix and it's going to give you you know similar to your array what so similar to arrays uh, you you also have matrices you know um, you can you can do all sorts of things with, with matrices. You can find the diagonal of the matrix, um, okay, and it's going to give you the diagonal. There's, it, you can either use numpy dot matrix or diagonal, or you can also use np dot diagonal directly, right? Which is just going to give you the value of the uh, the value of the uh, diagonal. You can use um, any of the linear algebra functions. You can do matrix multiplications. You can do vectors into matrices and so on. So any any mathematical operation you can think of, you can probably do it in NumPy. I am yet to come across an operation which I couldn't do in NumPy in the last 10 years. So, you know, whatever you can think of uh, will probably be there in NumPy. Okay, so that's what NumPy is. Um, we'll use it extensively when, when we are, uh, you know, actually using our data and then computing something with it. So, we'll, uh, so that, that's NumPy. Uh, the other library which I was talking about was matplotlib. Um, so I'm just going to go to matplotlib.org. Similarly, we'll look at the documentation for this as well. Uh, because after this, um, I'll just teach a few more things and then ask you guys to do some stuff. Okay. Um, I'm just going to go to examples directly and show you what all it can do. And then we'll do some very simple things with it. So, you know, any kind of plot, whether it's a bar chart, if, if you want to make some curves, you want to put error bars on it, um, you want to make fractals or, 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 you know, any complex chart you can think of, you want to put multiple sort of figures in, in one, uh, in one figure, you want to put axes, you want to, any sort of crazy thing you can think of, you can probably do it in matplotlib. Um, Again, similar to NumPy, I have not yet come across a diagram which I could not make in matplotlib, right? Uh, and there are examples. If you click on any one of the example, let's say error bar one, it's going to give you the code on how to do that. So you can see this uses NumPy and matplotlib, only two libraries, okay? And then you know this is how you have you have made it. If you want, you can sort of you know change things and so on. We'll we'll do some of these things right now okay so i'm going to talk about a um, few more numpy uh, commands so the first one is called linspace uh, so it's called np.linspace um, and what what this does is it gives you um, linearly spaced values between the start and the stop value so i'm just going to put uh, between 0 and 100 and i'm going to put 101 so i've put three arguments here so the first one is called start um, the second one is called stop and the third one is called num. Okay, um, I'll explain what is happening, what's going on over here. Um, so you can you can also just call it like this um, instead of putting start, stop, and zero. Um, you can just actually literally put zero, hundred, and hundred and one, and it's going to work in the exact same way. Okay, but the first one is a bit more readable. You know what exactly is going on. It's going to give you the exact same answer. Now, what linspace does is it takes three arguments, uh, start, stop, and num. Um, it's going to um, give you linearly spaced values between 0 and 100, and how many values? 101. Okay. Uh, 101 because from 1 to 100, there's 100 values, and then you have to count the 0. So that's why um, that's why there's 101 values. So if I, if I make it 100, what it's going to do is it's going to give you values which are between 0 and 100 but they're equally or they're equidistant to each other so um, since it's, it's not going to be 0 and 1 now it's going to be 0 and 1.01 .01 and 2.02 .02 and so on okay so that's why I had put 101 over here uh, to, to look at nice and even numbers okay or nice rounded numbers so that lens space okay so you can use it to 
create values between you know any any two numbers you can you can create values between let's say minus one and one as well okay so it's going to give you floating values between minus one and one and they're all equally spaced from each other right so let's put this in into an array let's just call it uh, you know uh, let's, let's just call it lin space one or or let's call it array one so this is array one uh, which is values between minus one and one hundred and one values we'll just call this array two which is um, between zero and hundred again hundred and one values and now what we are going to do is we are going to make a plot of this so to do that um, all you have to do is plt dot plot uh, and then the x uh, whatever you want to go on x axis so let's put array two on x axis so array two and then array one on the y axis and then just do plt dot show that that's all there is to you know plot these two things yeah and here's your plot so your x values goes from 0 to 100 y value go from minus 1 to plus 1 okay uh, but this is not a good plot and the reason i say that is because it has uh, no labels on what is x no labels on what is y it has no legend no title so you cannot infer anything out of this so we are going to add few more commands here so something uh, called plt.x label and for now okay um, and you know x and y labels are strings so you need to put in you, these are not numbers right so you you want to say something like you know x axis or similarly this plt.y label and i'm gonna just say y axis over here so every string goes goes in th these quotes right and now when i run this it's going to give me x axis over here y axis over here you can also do something called a label okay and i'm just gonna call it a line and uh, i know i'm going a bit fast over here but just give me uh, two minutes let me write it and then i'll show you what all happened so that's a line and then plt dot title yeah title yeah so that that sort of completes our plot so um what 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 all is happening over here is so you use a command called plt dot plot you put in your x values y values and then you put in your label whatever you want to say that line is right uh, you put in your x labels and y labels and this command plt dot legend this will give you this legend over here which says what line is what uh, plt dot titles gives you a title and then plt dot show just literally shows you this this figure right um, so any questions so far no okay um, now sir, sir? yeah yeah go ahead so the num part in the lin space uh, uh, thing is uh, is it uh, denoting the number of divisions it's going to do in the range? Uh, the number of values you are going to get. So let's let's see in a bit more detail. Okay. So so I, let's say I want ten numbers between minus one and one. So I'm just gonna say num uh, np dot lin space and then ten and you can see these are ten values. So one two three four five six seven eight nine ten. Right. If I want let's say three values. I'm just gonna say num is equal to three, and it's gonna give you minus one, zero, and one. Okay. Yes, I got it, sir. Okay. Thanks, sir. Yep. So can we change the color of our line? Is it possible? Color of what? So line. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The so straight line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can we can do that. So. So we can compare it. Yeah, we, we are plotting more than two lines. Yeah, so we can do this. Um, so, so I'm now on matplotlib documentation. Uh, I'm just gonna look for uh, plot, and I'm gonna show you. Uh, okay, I'm gonna search for plt dot plot because that is the command which we used, and it's going to show me for 500 other things. Plot. So 
these are all the plot commands that you can use. I'm just yeah. Oh, here's the plot command. Okay. So does it not give you everything at once? But anyway, yeah, I'll I'll show you how to do that. Yeah. So there's something called quarks in in more or less every programming languages. Okay, uh, uh, more or less every programming language. Okay, and it gives you all the extra things which you can do with that command. So the basic stuff for uh, plot is you know your args, which is x and y values. You know scale x, scale y. You don't have to worry about these things right now. And then this this star star quarks. So uh, let's look into quarks. This is where uh, you can change things like um, you know your let's see marker styles if you want to put in marker line style line width um, okay and color as well so I'll show you how to do all of these things so instead of label now next to label you can do line style is equal to double dash and let me do one thing uh, we'll create another array okay um, and then that will be easier for us array 3 is equal to array 2 plus 10 or yeah that that should be good and now i'm going to add another okay so this is what i've done um i have added array 3 versus array 1 and array 2 versus array 1 right and I'm just gonna call it line 1 and line 2 okay so by default whenever you add multiple plot commands a Python will automatically choose different colors for you okay but but you can choose um, them yourself so you can do color is equal to red and then color is equal to blue so it will change the color if you want to change the line style let's say i want one is dash lines and the other one is dotted uh, i think it's a single dot okay so yeah so it says value error double dot is not a valid value supported values are dash double dash dot dash none solid dash and so on so i'm just gonna you know make it single dot wait what oh that yeah so you can see now one line is dotted the other line is dashed okay uh, one's color is blue the other one's color is red and, and so on so you can add any number of um, I guess changes to your plot whichever ones you want you can just keep keep adding on and on um, if you want to see um, let's say I want to you know make my line orange okay you can just go ahead and Google on you know Python plot orange uh, plot line in orange plot line in orange and it's going to give you uh, forget the spelling mistake over here um, it's going to give you a stack overflow link or, or some tutorial link and it's going to show you how to do it exactly uh, so it's opening you know so yeah so it's going to say you just say color is equal to orange or if you or you can put these values and it's going to you know make your ply uh, make your uh, line orange right um, so you know feel free to just google stuff and how to do it but make sure you understand what you are doing just don't blindly copy paste code and, and run away with it okay so uh, this is basic uh, how to basically have arrays in numpy how to do anything with uh, with, with those arrays you can you know multiply them with numbers add add numbers to them you can um, do things like array uh, 3 is equal to array 2 plus array 1 okay but we know that array 1 is very small so it's going to be a very small difference you probably won't be able to even see it because as you can see these are very close array 1 was from minus 1 to 1 so I'll just make it minus 10 to 10 slightly bigger numbers so you can see some difference Yeah, so now you can see there are some differences between, you know, array 1 and array 2 and then array 3. And then you can plot different lines and then do different things. 
So, any questions so far? Sir, can we solve these uh, algebraic uh, problems using in graphs? Like, uh, can we find the intersection point in this? Um, there are multiple ways of doing that. Uh, you, so, you mean, do you want to do it using Python, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, well, one way is to just visually look at it and then do it. But if you want to exactly find uh, the intersection of two, uh, two lines, uh, there are methods for it. Uh, what you have to ultimately do is solve equations in this and then there are numerical ways of solving equations okay um not sure if you have heard of things like you know bisection algorithm or uh, you know tangent algorithms and so on or secant algorithm not tangent secant algorithm have you heard of those things no sir. no okay so yes sir. yeah so you can you can do um you can you can apply those algorithms over here um uh to to find let's say intersection point but that all form uh, fa falls under this this part of root finding um, with with numerical values. Um, what you need to understand is that um, in this case you actually have data which is very nice, which is you know minus ten to ten or zero to hundred. So you can actually see there's a very nice intersection. You can probably even you know solve it mathematically. Um, often when you have real data, it's very noisy, right? And then in those cases you you need to use these algorithms which I was talking about. Uh, we can get into those if needed, okay. But uh, but using NumPy, you can actually solve all of those, right? How to do it is a bit more complex than than you know how you do it with paper and pen. Okay, so I think we have five more minutes. Um, yeah, any questions, or comments, or feedback, or things you want to see in the next lecture. So, all good? Hello. Yep. Uh, so, the uh, lecture was nice, uh, good. Uh, sir, I have a doubt no, not uh, regarding. Hello, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Sir, I have a doubt not regarding the lecture today. Uh, I want to know about, uh, like you said, you are a data scientist. Okay. So, I want to just know ki how someone like can be a data scientist and what are the requirements and all. Yes. So uh, let's see. Requirements are you need to learn uh, statistics, probability, uh, you know, your basic math courses, and uh, some bit of programming. That that's what you need at the very minimum. Um, most of the data science these days involves machine learning, so you would need to, you know, do those kind kind of courses as well. Um, so. Yeah, that's that's where I'll put it. You know, your basic math courses, basic machine learning courses, and a good hand on programming is what you would need. And then you know, as much experience as you can get with data, because data is um, our bread and butter. And um, as you'll start soon realize, uh, you as you'll start realizing soon, um, real world data is very very messy. Um, so even when you are collecting data from Jantar Mantar, it's not going to look very nice. Um, you know, nice straight lines or something like that. And then, you know, learning to deal with it will, will come with, you know, uh, part of learning it, a part of learning will come from your courses, like statistics, probability, and, and, and other things. And part of it will come from uh, experience. That's it. Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. All right. Two minutes back to everyone. We'll stop the session here. Hi. Uh, those who are here, please fill the attendance form. Thank you. Um, once you filled it, we can leave, right? Yes, yes, sure. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thanks. Ma'am, where is the attendance form? 
So Ruchi, you joined very late. So this is one very important thing that I have to tell you. If you do not join within the first fifteen minutes of the session, you would be marked absent. Okay, ma'am. So I'm pasting it.